Hello, Internet, and welcome to my live reaction for Fire Force Chapter 205. Uh, when we last left our heroes, we got a more um, official introduction to Arthur's parents, who have been living in the Nether for the past decade or so. They've had three kids, and they're kind of suspicious, but they have um, the tip of an old rocket just lying around, and so Arthur and Vulcan both want to use that to reforge Excalibur. But I'm highly skeptical of them and suspect they may be white clads or like white clads transformed to look like Arthur's parents. Um, so we'll see about that going forward. Speaking of the white clads, we open with them. Uh, deep within the gloomy earth, the scheme, the scheme moves forward. Uh, and Yona approaches Haumea, which again, kind of links them, links Yona with, uh, Arthur's parents. Um... Anyway, uh, Yona walks up to, Ar to Haumea. Splendid work, Haumea. And Haumea, like, raises her head. Shut it. I don't need you to tell me. I know. The Pi decoding era is already here. The time of the pillars gathering grows near as well. And Haumea pauses. What does that Pi decoding era mean? I mean, we do know that, Arthur that the numbers of Pi were found in the Chinese uh, Amaterasu. Uh, so there's that. Uh, also, Arthur knows all the digits of pi, so that uh, continues to tie in to Arthur. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I, I guess that's kind of been a mystery since China, though, um, because the the number I don't think, I don't think we ever found out what they were doing, what the, what pi was doing in the the Chinese Amaterasu. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, where was I? Uh, the pillars gathering grows near as well. Hamea pauses. The Great Cataclysm, and we have this image of the Dola, the flames of Hell Royal, seeking to return our world to the blaze and sear its flesh. Chapter 205, The Holy Blade Reborn. So put all of that out of your mind, because we're getting back to Arthur and Excalibur. Uh, with Faring in hand, they now pursue the Holy Blade Excalibur. Uh, and then we cut to a smokestack and a fire where I guess they're, you know, smelting the rocket tip, uh to, uh, blade form. So that's kind of weird, because, um, because I thought they couldn't, the, the rocket was, like, could withstand atmosphere. Uh, you know, they said, like, 2,000 to 3,000 degrees Celsius. I doubt they're gonna get the fire that high. Um, uh, anyway. So Obi is talking to, uh, to, uh, Conroe. Thanks for letting us suddenly use your forge on top of everything else. It's to make Arthur's new sword, right? Is that new engineer Vulcan going to forge one? Oh, I guess. I guess Vulcan is kind of new to the, to the 7th Brigade. Um, like, to us, Vulcan's been around for like 150 chapters. But Connor, I guess, hasn't really seen Vulcan before um, they started hanging out to Asakusa after rescuing Obi. Anyway, yeah, Arthur's a strange guy. But if we can lift his spirits, I guess it'll make him stronger. Um... And so, uh, so we cut back inside the forge as, um, Vulcan is looking at, at, uh, the work. Yeah, that's what I expected. It's not hot enough to melt the fairing. We'll just have to use thermite to, su to supplement it. You've got this, kid. Uh, this, this old man is kind of watching, um, watching Vulcan work. Uh, then we cut to you and Lisa, where you is, uh, drinking some water. Um, and then you says, I suddenly feel exhausted for some reason. Where did Arthur's family get off to? And Arthur's also there. It's the first time they've been to the surface in ages. They're out seeing the town. So the boils are running free again, huh? Uh, and then Vulcan calls back to them. Nice, we're all ready. Now we just need to pour it into the mold. Uh, and Arthur gets real excited. I want to see! Uh, and then they're all kind of watching um, watching the, the molten, molten thing, whatever it's made out of, go into the mold. Whoa, I knew this would be sick! You'll have your rocket sword at last. Even even Vulcan and uh, not Vulcan, even Lisa and you are excited over this. Um, and Vulcan get uh, not Vulcan. Why do I keep saying Vulcan? Uh, Arthur gets really close to the like the stream of of uh, molten metal. Whoa! And you must like physically drag him back. Hey hey hey! Third generation or not, if you get that close, you're gonna get burned. Uh, and we then check. We then see uh, Vulcan who's. I don't know enough about metalsmithing to really describe what's going on. We're going to lose the initial strength of the aluminum alloy, but making a sword from a rocket is like something right out of a story. And uh, Lisa responds, 
Hard work pays off, huh? Uh, and Arthur just looks so content. That is the most adorable he has ever been. Uh, Misa comments, I've never seen Arthur look that happy. Uh, and then Arthur just, like, raises up his hand. Um, Holy Blade, your master summons you. To me, my sword. Uh, and nothing happens. Uh, but Team Vulcan kind of looks at him and laughs. Uh, sometime later, Vulcan is resting outside. Phew. And um, Obi walks up to him. Good work. You've earned yourself a soda. He hands him, like, a soda bottle. A little carbonation is just what I needed. Uh, and he, like, pulls it up to his, uh, pulls the soda to his mouth. Mmm. Looks like you're about done. You ran into a lot of irregularities, I hear, but... Ha, uh, well, when you're dealing with Arthur, nothing's regular. But I got my hands on something... But I got my hands on something incredible. It's way better than what I planned to use at the start. And Obi looks at him. Did Arthur give you a tough time? Nah, I had fun. It was like having a stupid little brother. Good. We, we need Arthur to be, to be strong just as much as we need your tech. Arthur might be an idiot, but he never betray our expectations. He'll show his power. We'll be fighting again soon, won't we? Yep. We don't have time to take it easy. I heard the news from Captain Hibana of the Fifth. Sister Sumi Ray's become a pillar, and the cause behind spontaneous human combustion. The Evangelist is plotting a second cataclysm. The end of their plans in sight, so we need to be preparing too. The decisive battle is coming. So yeah, we are super stepping into the end game now. In case that was not clear um, after uh, the the uh, the ending of the rescue arc. Um, also, this does kind of show that um, Hibana is not do not trying that hard to keep up like the face of um, not communicating with the eighth. Like, she just kind of, or maybe, maybe she, you know, let Benny Maru know, who let Obi know, because she can't officially talk to Obi or something. Um, but yeah, in case it wasn't very clear that Hibana was going to be, going to, going to rebel against the Empire, there's your proof. Um, anyway, after, after listening to that, uh, Vulcan, like, drinks down the word to escape me again. Um, drinks down the rest of, of, uh, his soda bottle. Well, break time's over. Because when the battle starts, all I'll be able to do is watch from the sidelines. Is that foreshadowing that he won't be doing that? I don't know. Anyway, Vulcan gets back to work making the sword. The sheath is going to be done soon. He even made him a belt to hold it. Uh, and Vulcan calls out, All right, home stretch. Uh, and sometime later, we hear a sound repeating. Uh, sometime even more later, Arthur san quick, quick, Vul uh, you've got, got, uh, got Arthur. All right, just go through here. Um... And Arthur kind of like looks at this wall. Uh, I guess it, I guess it's a door. Yeah, that is a door. Uh, it kind of looked like a wall for a second there. Thanks for waiting. Take a look. She's all done. Uh, and yep, there is Excalibur, sheathed, of course, because Arthur doesn't need a blade. Um, but it does look much fancier than his last sword. Uh, and Arthur looks at the sword. He picks it up. He like kind of like feels his hand over uh, over the the hilt. It's Arthur, and uh, Vulcan hands him something. Take this, too. What's this? I made it from what was left of the star fragment. It's a stellar ring. Hang it from your neck, and when the time comes, put it on. Uh, okay. Uh, and he he kind of, like, puts it down. He takes the sword, and he, like, you know, fo I guess focuses on it real quick. Has a, like, like, look of determination. Vulcan, thank you. I swear by this blade... I'll never lose to anyone, ever again. And Vulcan smiles. Don't disappoint me, Night King. Uh, and then there's a note left on, on the countertop. It was fun to be back on the surface after so long. We've gone on another journey. See you around, Dad. And Arthur reads it. Oh, Arthur, I heard you found your parents. I'm so glad. Uh, and I guess Maki, like, reads the thing over his shoulder. What, again? Arthur, are you all right? Um, and Maki pauses for Maki. It was impossible to imagine being, or no, sorry, I'm reading that wrong. That's more of a, more of a narrator kind of voice. For Maki, it was impossible to imagine being abandoned by your parents, not once, but twice. But when she looked at his face and profile, she could see it. He was the Night King who would take the true holy blade in hand and save their star. Common sense doesn't apply to the extremes of idiocy. Await the Night King's deeds. To be continued after 206, Connection. Alright, so... Arthur's parents are gone. Um, 
I'm very skeptical of uh, of them at all. I I think I think they're white clads. Um, the fact that they have Arthur have kids that look like Arthur um, seems to imply that they are just like members of the white hood of the white clads and um, not people who like had their faces morphed to look like uh, look like Arthur's parents because uh, that wouldn't affect their genetics and so the kids would be um, not look like Arthur. Uh, but because they do, I think that I think that they're just plain white clads. That's my that's my theory about the Boyles. Uh, we'll see how right I am. Uh, but there is just something suspicious about them that uh, I don't know. The fact that they know so much but they do so little is just highly suspect to me. I think they're up to something. Um, beyond that. Uh, we have that little bit with the white clads, uh, the pie decoding era, which, again, has something to do with what, what happened in China, I reckon. Um, and then, yeah, it's kind, of a, it's kind of a cute little chapter. Uh, be, beyond Excalibur being forged, not a, there's not a whole lot of intrigue to piece through. Um, but, yeah, everyone's kind of gearing up for the final battle, uh, which is really what... This whole arc kind of feels like in the end, you know, just getting Arthur ready for the final battle. Vulcan has kind of accepted that he can't do a whole lot once the battle starts. Because um, Vul Vulcan isn't a pyrokinetic, kinet pyrokinetic at all, is he, is, is he? I'm pretty sure he's just a normal guy who's just like a really good blacksmith. Um, so yeah, he, he'll kind of be sitting, sitting the battle out for the most part, uh, given that he can't really fight. Um... So yeah, it's it's just kind of a getting ready is finishing up Excalibur and kind of getting ready for you know the battle to come. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm trying to think of what to what else to say about it. It's it's a light chapter. There's not too big. It it you know accomplishes what it needs to accomplish. Excalibur is forged. Um, everyone's ready for for um, what's gonna come. Um, or, or, or they're getting ready for what's to come. Sorry. My, in case you've not noticed, my thoughts have just, like, not been here for this video at all. So I'm really sorry about that. Um, but yeah, Excalibur's here. The White Clouds are up to something. Uh, Arthur's parents are still hella sketchy. And yeah, that's kind of all I have to say for this chapter. So I hope you all enjoyed the chapter and the video itself. If you did, look for it, drop me a like or subscribe or, you know, do whatever makes you happy, you know? And remember, your life is your own, okay? Bye!